In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. In question 11, they give us this integral to do. There's nine marks for it, so it is quite difficult and long question. They thankfully do give us one hint. They tell us to use substitution for 2x is equal to tangent um, theta. Now, this introduces a trigonometric um, feature to the question. And that's going to be that's going to be prevalent throughout the whole thing. Um, this question is strange in that you don't actually have to do much maths in this question. We need to remember a lot, and uh, that's fair enough. In real life, uh, mathematicians don't always solve from first principles. They often just look up the answer. And in this case, we're going to be using our formula tables probably four or five times here to do different parts of this question and to make it a lot simpler. Um, we'll see that as we go through. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I cannot find the marking scheme to this question, so I was not able to uh, check my answer against that. Uh, I did tr double check my answer against a few other things, uh, solving the actual integral, um, uh, asking a website to do it. I, my answer agrees. So I'm quite confident in the answer, but I wasn't able to check with the marking scheme. Okay, uh, let's begin with the advice they gave us. Uh, let's rewrite this equation. I'll leave off these uh, numbers uh, nearly all the time, just to save me a little bit of writing. We can rewrite this as 12 over one plus two x squared, and the whole thing is squared, because that's what four x squared is, two x squared, and that's where the two x they're talking about is. Okay, um, then let's go ahead and f fill this guy in. Uh, we get 12 over one plus uh, tangent theta, uh, squared, that'd be squared, and the whole thing would be squared, dx. Now the problem we have here is we have theta in, in this and a dx out here. So we need to fix that. This is standard when we substitute. We've started substituting here. We usually want, we want to find dx, uh, dx equals. We, if we substitute a u in, we tend to find, differentiate u, uh, the derivative of u with respect to x, and then we um, use algebra to get dx out of it. Uh, this case is a bit more of a complex equation. There's no u equals, there's no theta equals. A um, couple of ways you could do this. You could just find dx d theta. Um, to help you do that, we divide uh, two across. That'd be the easiest way, I think, to do it. This would become a half, and the derivative of tan theta is, this again is something we just look up, and uh, the derivative of this is secant squared. So that's our first look up into the formula. We're, we're left with a difficult differentiation. We just look it up and we find the answer quite simply. Uh, that means uh, this is a half secant squared uh, d, d theta. So we'll replace that in over there. Before I move on, the other way you could have done this is uh, keep this line up here. And yeah, let me do it like this, uh, dx and just differentiate both sides with respect to theta. You'd end up using the chain rule on this side to get, the, to get something similar. Um, yeah, the half would appear out of this, and uh, the other side would be the same. You'd get the same answer, so I won't, I won't continue on there. Okay, let's rewrite this line. Uh, let's bring the 12 outside. 12 can come out here. Left one over uh, one plus uh, tangent squared theta. All squared. Instead of dx, though, we have a half secant. Sorry, secant squared d t. So is this better? It's it's a lot messier now. Uh, the half, I guess, can come all the way over here. Uh, we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, but it, it's a lot messier. But sometimes messy is good in integration. Maybe there's a a um, substitution we could do here that cancels out. But it's actually a lot easier than that. Hopefully seeing secant squared and one plus tan squared jogs a memory. Go back and check your formula. Uh, you'll find that one plus uh, tan squared is actually equal to secant squared. So I can rewrite this 
as uh, outside would be a 6 now the integral of 1 over this just replaces with secant squared it's all still squared though there's still, there's still this outside squared up here is secant squared d theta so there's four of them here two of them here that just cancels uh, I guess it just cancels with that there and uh, just let's write it one more time to be a bit cleaner uh, 1 over secant uh, squared theta d theta Again, I would go check my formula. Is there an easy way to integrate this? Unfortunately not. There's an easy way to integrate secant squared if it's on the top row. There's no easy way to do this one. Um, so you're going to have to start playing around again. Uh, what, what, what I would play around with, I, I never quite like secant squared at all. So I would have often had cosine in all along. Remember, secant is 1 over cosine. So this just becomes 6, uh, the integral of... Uh, cosine squared theta d theta now we're getting to something this looks a bit more manageable doesn't it it's it's actually not it's not easy yet but it is more manageable um let me let me clear a bit of room because we're going to continue over the whole bottom here so to do with the integral of cosine squared from first principles is uh, quite difficult i don't know it offhand i'd have to look it up but there's a handy trick to solve um cosine squared and sine squared well sine squared you turn it back into cosine is the handy trick. Um, we can replace cosine squared with something. There's, a, there's an identity for that. There's a couple identities. One minus sine squared though wouldn't help. Uh, the identity we want to use is, yeah, it'd be written like this in your formulas. Cosine 2a is equal to 2 cosine squared a minus, uh, yeah, minus 1. This one, it doesn't look that good right now, but if I rearrange this, so cosine squared is on its own. Sorry, that should be an A. Um, let's see, the one would have to come across. That'd be cosine 2A plus one, and the two would have to divide everything. This is a lot better than that. Let's, let's just write it out again. Six, uh, the integral of, instead of this, we would have cosine two theta over two, uh, plus, let's separate the one out, plus one over two. This is now something we can finally solve. Uh, we have to use uh, identities multiple time. We even had to use uh, our formula table to differentiate, was it uh, secant or no, tangent, uh, tangent theta. Um, so we, I don't feel we've done any real work yet, just a little algebra here and there. But we finally got down to something we can, we can integrate. We can integrate this and we can integrate a cosine uh, with a differentiable inside <laughs> you know like the derivative of 2 theta is just 2 that's that's perfect we can use substitution but we'll, we'll actually just do it in our head uh, cleaning this up a little more uh, let's see the 2 can come out of both of them I suppose and we're left with 3 outside the integral of cosine 2 theta uh, let's just integrate both of them separately plus the integral of uh, 1 d theta uh, at this point, we, we really need to put back in our numbers. Uh, so we started with a half theta. Oh, I've rubbed out the part I needed. 2x is equal tan theta. Um, it hasn't been a half. Uh, let's see when it changed. It was a half here, a half here. At this point, I should have changed it because we're no longer integrating with respect to x. We're now integrating with respect to theta. So when, when x equals a half, what is theta? We can just put it in. Uh, two halves are are one. Uh, the in, uh, inverse tangent of one is I, I was just double checking <laughs> is is pi over four. And when x is equal to zero, that's a lot easier. Um, what tan of what is zero? That's um, theta equal zero. Okay, so putting that all back in here, I would get pi over four and zero pi over four and zero. So we can go ahead and integrate this. Uh, let's see, three outside and multiply it into everything later. Uh, the integral of this is, the integral of cosine is sine, and we leave what in there is alone. But now we have to deal with it by differentiating it and dividing our answer, as long as it's simple. So the derivative of this is just two, which is simple, so we can just divide that by two. Uh, plus the integral of this is just theta, and uh, yeah, that's it. This is all still evaluated at pi over four and zero. So let's go ahead and put these in. 
again we leave three outside a big bracket here and uh, pi over four goes in here that's two times pi over four which is just pi over two sine of pi over two or sine of 90 is, is just one half of times one put in a calculator if you're not sure a half times one is just a half and uh, this is plus pi over four and then put zero in that's easy zero goes in sine of zero is zero um, I'm sorry, this should be a minus, not that it matters, it's still zero. Um, minus um, zero goes in here is zero. So again, they don't matter at all. Uh, multiply the three in, we get three over two plus a uh, three over four pi. And uh, yeah, they, they asked us to, to have our answer in the form of a plus b pi, where a and b are rational numbers. Okay, they're rational numbers out uh, there. Okay, that was a long question, but not as long and scary as the nine marks would suggest. Uh, but that's because they didn't help you at any point. There was about four or five steps there. If I went through them again, um, that you need to take leaps at. You first of all need to notice that uh, 4x squared is 2x squared. squared. Uh, next leap, you, well, they told you to replace it with tan theta. That was good. They gave you help there. Your next leap was you needed to know 1 plus tan squared was secant squared. Again, you could look it up in the formula, but you still needed to take that leap. Um, when doing the substitution, you needed to know the derivative of tan theta. Again, it's in your formula, but you needed to notice that. Uh, the next thing, I guess we could have just did a bit of algebra, a bit of algebra. The next leap, you needed to know is that secant squared is the same as uh, one over secant squared. It's the same as cosine squared. That was a leap. The next big leap was to know is how to solve cosine squared you had to expand it into a uh, cosine two theta plus one all over two. And then it was just integrating these fairly simple integrals, fill it in. So there wasn't any difficult maths there. There was just four or five times you had to rem know where to look. You had to know what leap to take. Okay, I hope I answered that somewhat uh, okay. Um, but uh, if I didn't, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, have a great day.